All right, so GWAS p-values and family-wise there, right? So if you were to use a significant threshold of 0.05, if you take the negative log 10 of that, you get 1.3. So 1.3 on this graph is like right down here on this bottom line. So as you can see, most of the variants, in, well not most, but many of the variants in the genome have a p-value more significant than 1.3. So should we assume that all of these variants are significantly associated? No, why not? There's so many variants that your memory-wise error rate is going to be pretty high. Exactly. And what about my false discovery rate? Oh, Right. Because remember, if we have a, yeah, so, so Anderson's on the mic and we probably can't hear you. Yeah, so one thing is our family-wise error rate is going to be super high because our family-wise error rate is the probability of having like one or more false discoveries. And if we're controlling at a threshold of 0.05, you actually expect 5% of your tests to be false discoveries, if it's all in all. So basically, if we control at this threshold, all of these guys up here are false discoveries. So instead, we're going to use this threshold of 5 times 10 to the negative 8. And that controls, when you take the negative log 10, that's at 7.3, which is this dashed line up here. And as you can see, there's actually only a few locations on this plot where you have variants that have a p-value more significant than that. Um, and if we use this significant threshold, then we're actually controlling the family-wise error rate at 0 0.05, which is what we want to do. Now, who can tell me why is it that like in this block here, there's a ton of variation that's all statistically significant right there? Why isn't it just like one dot at that location? And why is it the same for all of these? Why is there always a bunch of dots and not just one dot that shows up as significant? Exactly. So it could be that all of these variants are in high LD with each other. And if they're in LD, it means they're going to have similar estimated effects and similar p-values. And so we don't actually know which variant in here is the causal variant or the risk variant. We just know that something in here is associated with the phenotype. And so what we're going to do is each one of these peaks, we're going to call it like a genome locus or we're going to call it an associated locus. It's essentially just a region of the genome where we know that there's something that's going on in the genetics that appears to have an effect on phenotypes. And whatever variant happens to be at the very tip top of these peaks, we'll usually call the top GWAS hit or the top hit. However, it's very possible that the top hit, naively you might think that the top hit is the variant that's driving the trait, and it turns out that's not necessarily the case. A lot of times you can actually have multiple variants that can all have an effect, and then due to the LD structure being complicated, you can get a variant that has no effect actually appearing to be really strongly associated when in reality it's just a couple of other variants um, interacting um, with it. So if we take one of these peaks and we zoom in on it, this here now is that peak. And in this, they kind of simulated, I believe this SNP as being the causal SNP. And as you can see, due to this LD pattern here, these red things represent high LD. And the color here, so these red guys are all in high LD with this SNP up there. You can see that they're all, um, they all appear significantly associated because of the LD structure between this variant that I, I think is simulated as being causal and um, the other ones. And so that's what you can see. This, this is what will make that strong peak up there. And figuring out which variant in here is actually driving that signal is called fine mapping. And it's super complicated to do, um, but it's an active area of research. Um, but what you really need to know from a GWAS is that this is what you're looking for. You're looking for these kind of clumps of significantly associated variants. It's called a GWAS locus or a risk locus. 
Um, and, uh, and usually one of the variants in that locus, which has the strongest appearing effect, will be called the top hit. All right, in conclusion, we learned about Mendelian randomization, which is the idea that phenotypes can't affect the genotype. So if you see a relationship between the genetics and the phenotype, you can kind of know that something in the genetics is contributing to whatever the phenotype was. GWAS has these top, these top hits, and these hits will, we call it tagging, or being correlated with, or an LD with, some actual causal risk variation, but we usually don't know what that causal risk variation is. It's actually very rare that we know what that is. So this GWAS, it finds these uh, locus in the genome that are associated with the phenotypes. And when we do GWAS, usually we have an output. So we get estimated effects for each variant, as well as their corresponding p-value. And thanks to changes in how we do GWAS, almost all these GWAS results are now publicly available. So you can go to any of these studies and you can basically download this list of effect sizes and p-values for most studies that you wanna look at. Um, and that we can tr control the family-wise error rate when we do these GWASs by using that really significant threshold.